All right, everyone. Welcome once again to Faces of Business. I am your host, Damon Postalka, and we have a special guest with us today. We have Shannon Carrier here today. We are going to be talking about enabling H or using HR to enable business growth because Shannon is awesome at helping people with HR. Shannon, welcome today. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited. So glad oh, to be here. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. So excited we can finally make this happen. Whew. Lots of things happening for you. It's summertime. Mm -hmm. Your sons are in baseball. Good stuff. Maybe winding up a, a little bit, but starting again later. This is awesome. We're going to have some good stuff about that later. But first, <laughs> I always like to share with our listeners the background of our guests so we can understand where people are coming from. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. So I have been uh, in the HR world for just about 20 years and spent most of my time uh, adventuring through corporate in a, in a variety of different uh, roles and, and opportunities and um, really a chance to experience all the different areas. I, I was fortunate enough to, to touch just about everything. Um, very fortunate to not have to touch payroll. So I got through that pretty well. I'm excited um, so far. And yeah. um, just a few years ago, thought, you know, I can really take all of this and, and do something with it and, and maybe make some impacts on uh, in, a, in a bigger way for me outside of that corporate world and, and transition to the, to the consulting and fractional space. Nice. Nice. So what drew you into HR? I, I think like many, it was more I fell into it. Um, I, I started in hospitality and I was in operations and they needed somebody to do something like training and no one was willing and i was young and impressionable and said i'll do anything to look good so yeah. I, I i tried it and i really fell in love with the the training and development side the the kind of the, the culture shifting and, and things of that nature that you got to be a part of yeah and 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 i think i just got hooked from there yeah that well and it's I, it's a lot different than the day-to-day -day work that you normally would get into at that point. And it, probably a little more people oriented as well. Right. And it, it was, it was fresh and exciting and, and hospitality. I was dealing with a bunch of customers who were frustrated. I mean, who knew that in the long run, I'd still be dealing with a bunch of customers that are frustrated uh, yeah. as an HR professional, but it's a different, it's a different game and getting up and facilitating it. it it's a rush. It's an excitement from that day-to-day. Um, -day. You're right. Very cool. Very cool. Well, wow. We got, we got <laughs> lots of comments already so far. We got Sharon stopping by and going, woohoo. So happy. <laughs> thanks for being here today, Sharon. We got Harry Flares here again. Thank you, Harry, for showing up, my friend. Happy Friday Eve. That's what we like to hear because we're getting ready for that. Jason Forehands here. Hello, Damon Postalka and Shannon. Awesome. Chase, Jason, thank you. Sorry, my lips are getting tongue tied here. And and he talks again. Chaseon says again, we fall into the work. I can't tell you how many people that is. It's like, how'd you get into it? I kind of fell into it. Yeah. And it's situations put us into those those uh opportunities. That's really is what it is. I like to uh, think it's fate of some sort. It's yes. just we belong there somewhere. Yes. Yeah. So do you really do okay? So you've been in it for more than a couple of years. Do you do you still have the same passion for it that you did when you started? Yes, and different, if yeah. you will. I, I no longer get the excitement of getting up in front of a group like I used to. I, mm -hmm. I'm kind of I'm over it, right? I'm tired. I wanna I wanna do things that that maybe have a little more behind the scenes uh, yeah. impact. I would say, in fact, probably what I'm most passionate about these days is is getting the HR experience to be very low drama people management. Like how could we take that, the intensity out of, of, of how we're managing people? Um, probably a couple ways I could describe that. Yeah, um, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, one is, is, is the common sense approach, right? We have to realize that all of us are humans doing human activities and it's not about hierarchy or ego or power, like none of that stuff is going to move us forward. We have to come up with sensible solutions with strong 
company outcomes and not individual outcomes. So working away from thinking that leadership is all the things that belong and really we're, we're a, one big team that all plays a part. And um, the second part of that is I really work hard to create low reaction environments. So I had a boss, speaking of hospitality earlier, um, I had a boss early in that time, uh, bless his heart, um, really steady human, like got things done, pretty decent leader, um, but he had this one major flaw and that's when he had a few leaders who would escalate things really intensely. I mean, like one little tiny thing would set them off and they'd come stomping up to his office or they'd be screaming on the phone and he had a choice, right? He could sit and de-escalate and try to work through that or he could jump into their escalation and he did every single time. And I mean, the guy just had the knack for finding the wrong fire extinguisher for the wrong fire and things would just explode every single time. And I think it, it was those moments when I realized I don't wanna be that kind of leader. I, uh -huh. I, I don't wanna do that to people and I don't wanna do it to myself because the incredible stress level involved with that is is wild. and. And so I try to create environments where no matter what's happening, you're not going to see me react, right? You could yeah. tell me something really big and I'm just going to ask questions and try to understand and then we'll sort through solutions. Um, I think that brings a lot to an organization. That is huge. That is huge. <laughs> it, 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 and I think if you're bringing that to organizations, you can forget about everything else. Cause if you can do that in organizations, that's a, that's, that's an incredible thing to do because, and I've, I've seen it in some of the organizations I've been working with for a while now. And really it takes intentionality to be able to do it. But when you can do that and you can go, okay, we're going to talk about something uncomfortable here. We all know it's going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But we all know that we have to do it and we can do it professionally. It's it's an incredible experience to be able to do that. Yeah. And you get to results and good outcomes yes. that much more quickly. And yeah. isn't that what we all want? Yes. Yes. And yeah. that's that. But like you said, we have that choice to jump into that intensity or we can choose to listen and let people talk and do whatever's going to happen and then start mm -hmm. to move forward with a different approach. That's right. And yeah. I get it. Sometimes we're bored and a little drama feels good. Yeah. But if, as long as it's not a, a constant thing. <laughs> yes. Yes. But it, it is. It, it And thinking back through through my career and other times, you certainly do meet people that jump right onto that energy level that the coming in front of them. And there are mm -hmm. others that they just pause and let 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 the person talk and then help to de-escalate and actually resolve things. Mm -hmm. so. And and either way, it's a learned behavior they've had along the way, whether at home or through their yeah. career and things that they've been trying to develop. So Yes. So well, and the good thing is people can learn to change that. Yeah. I mean, if, you, if you see the problematic nature of it, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, for me personally, it, it started uh, years ago with just going, count to 10 before you say stuff, stupid. <laughs> I mean, really very nice honestly. to yourself. Um, well, I think mean, I, mean, I was nicer than that, but I mean, just say count to 10. Yeah. In my, you know, you just go back like that and, and you, you don't need to, you really need to let things soak in yeah. a little bit. So did that work for you? Oh yes. Yeah. Do you still count to 10 or you, do you use another method? Very, very few I have to do because I can just, I, I listen, I just mm. listen. It's, it's more it's, natural it's, now. It's, yeah, it's more natural. I still it. feel it. Still feel it, especially if it's it's something that's getting me. I still feel it, but I fight <laughs> it back. I say, nope, you have to listen. Yeah. You have to sit there. You have to go yeah. through it. This is okay. It. You know, even though you feel your you feel your adrenaline starting to move into your body, you still just can't say anything. You no. just want to just let it go. Just yes. breathe. Yeah. You're breathing and listening, breathing and listening and the inside, mm -hmm. you know, that little devil just, just going crazy, but <laughs> it has helped a lot. It's helped a tremendous amount because, you know, you, as, as you said, you want to create an, a, an environment where people are doing work together. 
and people yeah. need to be able to bring their frustrations and we have to understand that there are people that are going to be on varying degrees of of their personal development their environment that they were grown that they grew up in and uh and how they communicate and we have to be as leaders we have to be able to respond to that and, and get them working together and 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 that's really the, the piece of it is is when you have a reactionary leader um whether it's surprise or anger or anything it creates unpredictability and business in and of itself is already unpredictable we don't need as leaders to bring that same thing to the table yes Yes. Good, good, good. Well, we got, we got a few chase and said, stop the knee jerk reactions and get to the action of solving problems. <laughs> well done, Shannon. Mm -hmm. And then he also said, hashtag courageous conversations, which I think that's, I've, I've be, I have, I appreciate those so much now, you know, because it's, it's easy when I think when you don't confront those things, it's easy to push it away. Right. Mm -hmm. We go, OK, OK, OK. And it just festers and gets really big. And then all of a sudden it comes out a lot worse if you don't uh, do it. And if you just say, nope, we're going to talk about it now. Yeah. And, and that goes back to that idea of, of, of being common sense with your people. If, if you realize that it's not about you and how you feel in a situation, it's what they're experiencing. And the sooner you can get to figuring that out and approaching about it, having a courageous conversation or whatever conversation it looks like. The sooner you get to that, the sooner you get to results, getting our own egos out of the way or whatever yes. it may be. Yes, that's awesome. Well, Barry says, listening is so key. I'm just going to just take a moment on that one. Yeah. Uh, this is something interesting. Harry says, I see new HR names, Shannon, like head of people, human capital management, talent management, partner resources. I always believe the name human resources was fine as long as you're a good human who's resourceful. Uh, agreed. It, it just, that doesn't fit in a business card anymore. So yeah. Yeah. if I could fit that, maybe we could work it out. Yes, that would be good. That'd be good. So as you're, so we, we have four generations of humans in the workplace today. We got people that are fed up with the fact that they, can't work remotely anymore. We got people that don't want to work remotely. We got leaders that don't know how to do hybrid. We got people that it's all these kind of things happening. So what are some of the things that you see as common traits in these companies you're helping right now? I would say that if there's one common trait for every single company I have probably ever helped, it's that they get in their own way overcomplicating a solution and and to the point and, and i'll use this word but i think it's, it's the best word i can come up with because it's it's some sort of some sub subconscious fear of people and what they're going to do so as leaders we we sit around a room and we speculate but what about this and they're going to think about this and how are they going to react and now why don't we just find out why don't we just engage them instead of sitting here in all this speculation? And 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 similar to that, we we often use generations in a in a generalized way. We talk, oh well, all of them are like this. All of the employees feel this way. All of the employees, but really, do does every single employee feel the exact same way, or have we have we not really gotten a, a clear pulse on it? So yeah, organizations, if they can slow down, again, get out of their leadership boardrooms or conference rooms or, or wherever they're at in a Zoom call um, and, and just go talk to them and find out what they really think. Don't be afraid to ask a question that might get you an answer that's unpleasant and, and you might get past something. Yes, don't be afraid of the unpleasant answers. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm writing that one down. Yeah. That's a good one. And, and they're usually the biggest gems, right? They're the ones yep. that stop us in our tracks and say, oh, I didn't realize that. And once we realize something we didn't, then we start to move forward. Best gems. That's true, though. It's true. Because it's 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 like anything. You 
the people closest or the people that are involved know better than the people that are leading them usually how things are done or what's going on. So uh, it's great to do that. Mm -hmm. So as you're, as you're helping companies, um, let's talk about some of the typical situations that you see coming into companies that, that could be landmines to growth, could be landmines to recruiting other things and, and just keeping the best talent they got. Mm -hmm. Um, gosh, I would say that that one varies from company mm -hmm. to company because there, there so many pe people are in just different stages. Um, I often, I often work with companies who are in a, a turnaround stage, right? They've, they've, they've gone so far and some things have gone wrong and we're trying to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, or we're trying to maybe uh, prepare for a sale. We'd really like to sell, but we realize we've got some some issues that we need to fix up. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes if I'm really lucky, I'll, I'll talk with a company who says, I've done this before and I messed up and I don't want to do it wrong the next time. So on, on some good days, we'll I'll talk to some folks that are in that stage. Um, so I think that those are probably the, the, the most common. Um, when I think about the the sales folks, it's interesting because they almost have an idea in mind. I just want to fix things enough so I can sell. But that's not always a, enough to just be enough, if you will. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and they'll say, well, OK, HR due diligence. I just have to make sure that no one's going to sue me. And if that's good, then, then a buyer is going to be OK with it. And I think we have to go beyond just doing well enough that we haven't hurt somebody to the point of litigation. Mm -hmm. That's a really, it's a really far extreme to dig into. If, if we could do something different and uh, create value and maybe some sustainability, we put the organization in a really good position, whether you're going to sell or not, because yeah. you may do some good things that make you think, maybe I want to hang on to this sucker because mm -hmm. I've done some cool things with it. Yeah. I agree in that, in that, at that point, I mean, when we talk with people and we're going through, you know, restructuring or whatever they want to do as they're preparing to exit or go to the next growth level, then exit. We always, when we talk, we talk about, we run the business type, we're never going to leave and we want it to run as best we can, but we intend to sell it when it's, when it's right time. <laughs> you run it like That's you're never going to leave, but yeah. you know that you're going to sell it when it's the right time. And, yeah. and, and that's why your HR decisions or investment decisions and other things are always uh, done like that so that we can make sure that these things are done. Because you're right, doing just enough to get through due diligence oftentimes backfires because just enough is easily seen if somebody wants to go deep. And good And good buyers know how to do it. All right. If you're going to put your money into something, you want to know the details. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have some tips for those who want to look at that. If, if we have a few let's, minutes to talk through let's it. Let's do that. Let's do that. So you got okay. a few tips to, for people to consider if yeah. they're going to get ready to sell. Yeah. Or if they're not and they just want yeah. to make a better business, that works too. They will make a better business. There we go. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think so. One of the very first foundational things is when we look at compliance, uh, people think though about compliance is, okay, do I have my posters up and did I do a handbook? Great. I'm awesome. I'm done. And it's really so much more than that because you can have those things in place, but you're still pretty exposed to liability if you don't know what to do with them. So you have to have processes that, that feed into the policies that you put together. So say for example, um, Department of Labor, you are required to allow meal and break times for employees. Um, mm -hmm. And states differentiate, you know, how much and, and which. So it's different each place. But either way, it's there. So you put in your handbook, uh, all employees must have a 30 minute meal break. Great. You did your job, right? You're all done. They're going to do it. It's all set. We don't have to think twice. Of course not. So you have to look at one. Are you holding them accountable to that? Mm -hmm. Two, do you actually have systems that allow for tracking that meal period? When it comes to something like a time in attendance, if you don't actually have a system that's supporting you and you're not yeah. doing your work to hold them accountable, 
It doesn't exist. You didn't do it. And now you're exposed to liability. Ooh, great point. Yeah. Because if you can't prove that you did, there's nothing, nothing exists. Similar, if you have uh, 15 or more employees, you're subject to the American Disability with Dis Disabilities Act, uh, of course, which tells you not to discriminate against people with disabilities. And so you can say that in a policy, great, it's in the handbook, we're not going to discriminate. But if a disability actually exists within your, within your pool of people, or you perceive it exists within your pool of people, you are responsible for taking specific steps in approaching accommodations to prevent discrimination. So if you're not actively taking steps to prevent it, you are exposed to liability. Actively taking steps. So we got to see, what are you talking about there? Well, it, it, it's it's a lot more detailed than oh, yeah. I don't want to bore the entire uh, the entire audience here. But there uh, there's a there's a process um, to have uh, interactive discussions with an employee, and you have to walk through that process and and find options and, and availabilities and engage them in conversation in a certain method in a certain set of steps um, in order wow. to be compliant. Ooh. That's something that's something I did not know. That's no. for sure. Ah, yeah. So it's stuff. more than just a handbook, right? You actually have to have the 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 processes and the actions that come along with what you've got in that handbook. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's number two. Let's go to the next okay. one. Yeah, that was number one. That was only that was number one. one. Number We're ready one. For number two. Compliance and ADA. Well, yeah. And then, and then, you know, when you get over 50, it's a whole nother thing that you have to deal with and we've got some clients in that situation and it's yeah it does i mean they there it the processes have to be behind these things because mm -hmm. like you said if you don't have a process you aren't tracking you aren't doing exactly that's it yeah the second one i would really take a look at is performance and this is twofold because there's an opportunity to show a buyer that your employees are dedicated, engaged, they're working towards goals if you have performance plans in action. And if I wanna buy a business and I ask, are the employees worth keeping? You're gonna tell me they're amazing because you love them, you've been with them for years, right? But if you could show me that they are amazing over a period of a few years, uh, you're building credibility, I'm gaining confidence that maybe there's some real value here in the business. And well, not to mention if you're, if you are working with the team on goals that make the business more valuable in other ways, then you're also making the business more valuable in other ways. Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting those pieces together. So win, win. Um, and, and really you're giving your employees a chance because your buyer is, confidently hearing from you that they are a must have. Mm -hmm. right? So they already have a leg up. So if, if we are, if they are bringing employees over, they're going to know long ahead of time who I want to bring because you've got mm -hmm. evidence that shows that they're strong players. And that's a great point because we talk a lot with, with sellers and preparing businesses, getting those businesses ready for sale but I really hadn't thought about it in terms of this. If you have a solid performance reviews and you can show that your key management team, you know, they've been there for however long, but this is what their reviews say. And they're showing that they have, you know, they're continuing to develop There are things that are good, bad, but they're overall, they're really solid. That's a, that's a big thing. Wouldn't that make you excited? Yes. Yes, it would. It would, it would me. Like if I'm thinking about it, I'm like, wow, they've real, they're really settled there. So maybe, there's something else in the cell that that isn't as desirable or I think might require a little more time and effort. But if I know I've got a solid employee base. Yes. It's that's easier to say thing. yes. Yeah, it's a it's a huge aspect that I hadn't really considered deeply enough. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And also, like you said, it's it's just getting the. That. Specific kind of feedback and conversations with those employees too. Mm -hmm. And and the engagement with them takes them takes them further and makes them more connected with the organization. 
which leads me to the third piece. Um, you really have to understand at the beginning, as soon as you possibly can, your market uh, compensation and an equity standing. So when a business is turning over, there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of stress that comes along with it. And in employees who aren't don't have that connection with the business, whether it be because they've got loyalty and they they feel good about their work, um, and they're not being reasonably paid, or they know that they're off in equity, they're going to be more likely in the midst of the transition to go find something else with I don't know less turmoil, mm -hmm. um, even if it's at the same wage rates, because they understand they're walking into a challenging situation for a period of time. And so if you're checking this early and communicating clearly with the teams, uh, you may have some more peace of mind with the sustainability throughout the employee transition, because you have to ask yourself if you are strong enough in the market with your people to sustain a four to six month significant changeover. Yeah. Because it can take that long for a new owner to get acquainted and adjusted and, and build trust. That's a great point. Because it is, it is really about, you look at what you're talking about, make sure you're compliant, make sure you're proving that, make sure that your performance reviews are, are being done and, and you really have the right people in the right places and show that. And then you look at the last one, if they're, if they're, properly compensated, you know, you, you've got a, a really solid foundation to, to show that your team is good and they're going to, mm -hmm. and they're going to stick around. And so the owner doesn't have to, new owner doesn't have to stress that they, they can work on the things that may be more labor or mind intensive. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ah, good stuff. Good stuff. And that was, that was something that came up uh, in a conversation of, uh, Last week, I think it was, we were talking about it and talking about the cultural integrations in a in a merger mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. the challenges of those. And this this is also something that would would help to really get that the the compensation, like you said, to keep people through that smooth through that uneven time because there is an uneven time. I don't care if it's if you're bringing in five employees or five thousand employees. There's going to be an uneven time or. or just a, a rough time because things change. They just do. Cause it's, um, it's uncertain and it's different and, and no one, no one trusts in the way that they would like to trust to feel comfortable. It's yes. lacking comfort. And I'm a strong believer that, that culture is a product of the systems that we put in place. And if we don't have, have systems that support what we believe, then, then things can easily fall apart. Yeah. Yes. Very cool. So you said something. I um, I don't know if it was when we were on now or before we got on. So, oh, yes. Companies in turnaround. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of tech companies, a lot of other companies laying people off. I mean, it's not, we're not in a, in a free fall down, you know, downward spiral in our, in our economy, but this there just seems like over the last year and a half or two years, there have been in certain sectors, some pretty heavy layoffs. And mm -hmm. what are you seeing if people are faced with that or a couple things that they can do that can help them lessen the blow? I don't know, not, not do it so poorly. I mean, look at all the horrible examples we have people doing it, you know, letting thousands of people go on zoom or not even telling them, just yeah. coming in coming in, and their stuff doesn't work or their keys don't work or, you know, and all this kind of stuff. I, I, I wish we could, we could fix that. I think what you're seeing there are acts of desperation where they really missed the boat probably one to two years prior to this situation and seeing everything that they should have seen. And yeah. now they have no other way out. So um, those aren't very salvageable. And, Unfortunately, when, when, when we're in an environment that we kind of allow for those kinds of quick fixes to happen, right? If, you're, if your publicly traded companies are being rewarded for making quick fixes like that, mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to see much change. And those are band-aids. And they think, wow, this, this band-aid worked. 
it's going to work again. So I don't think there's a lot of motivation to, to change to change that uh, overall behavior. And with larger companies, honestly, sometimes it's just so much so out of hand. You have 30,000 employees plus plus employees. It's probably going to cost you just as much money to, to work into a turnaround <laughs> than it would to do the quick fix. So I hate to say that, but there's not a ton of motivation there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if we as companies are always thinking about those results, if we're always thinking about avoiding complacency in our work to make sure that, again, we're not looking at frivolous outcomes, but we're trying to keep the business running and and we put our efforts towards some of these things that I've talked about, making sure you have the fundamental systems in place you're going to see the red flags that maybe we're overspending or maybe we're over hiring a lot sooner mm -hmm. than, than you do otherwise. Um, if you're not watching that, if, if maybe you're focused on, on, on things that are good, like innovation, uh, but because of that, it distracts you from the fundamentals. It's just more likely. Yeah. And I think you hit the nail on the head in all these points here first. And even the last one was, just drove the point home is you can only focus on innovation so long before the money catches up. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd say it, it, that's what happened to a lot of these people. We, we, and you know, we got caught up in thinking people think it's going to go great forever. And, and they, you know, they massive hiring. And, and like you said, if you don't have the right systems in place to see when it's time to start tapering that off, to really let the business absorb it and see where you're at, you, you're going to go into this cyclical bounce of in and out of that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and like I shared earlier, sometimes we're chasing the drama and, and something like innovation or some of these really sexy ideas are, are wonderful and they're exciting. You just have to balance that with, with, with the, with the positive influence things that allow you to innovate more and, and realize that that, that if you have these things going on, that's going to give you more of that high that you're mm -hmm. looking for. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good stuff. Um, Jamie says, totally agree about compensation equity. And it is no small, not a small undertaking to do that analysis. No, it's not. It's not. And there, there are some good tools that will help an awful lot on that. And it is something that uh, it's, it's not easy. It's not yeah. easy. And especially if you've overlooked it for a long time. It's, right. and it, it's, it's not just about knowing what the job is worth in the market. It's knowing what the job is worth to you and understanding how you're utilizing that. And, mm -hmm. and that, that creates a complexity that a lot of people, maybe outside of manufacturing, don't really do mm -hmm. job valuation. Well, and that's, that is a great point because we, we've worked with other clients, other industries outside of manufacturing, and they oftentimes do not look at it that way. Like you do in manufacturing, you know, how many dollars are generated by a, a mm -hmm. certain station or certain work cell, whatever it is. And that really helps you understand what you, you know, what that person is generating, how much they can be, they, mm -hmm. they can be paid and everything with everything working out the way you want it to be. Um, it's huge. It's huge for you to understand that. Imagine if we did that in some of these, and some of these tech companies to understand what of our roles are are revenue generating and 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 truly and, and truly investment oriented, and then watching that balance to it to a comfort level. Yeah, to change the game. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Um, yeah, Harry always coming in with some great comments. How about thinking about doing the right thing, and that always seems to work the best. That's that's <laughs> a great approach. They the um. In these in these turnarounds, though, I think you're right. The one one thing that I've always and it's and honestly, it's the reason why I moved out of investment owned businesses is that as an investment owned businesses, whether it's a private investor owned or publicly traded company, the the necessity or our our demands as investors have, have driven it. Mm -hmm. The driven the demands of shareholders have, have have driven these kind of actions, and we have 
very little tolerance for someone that stands up and says the right thing to do in our company. Now, just imagine this. If if someone just pick figurehead at a big company right now, and if they stood up and said, well, you know, the right thing for us to do is we're going to retrain all of our employees and we're going to lose a billion dollars this year doing it. But we think in, in, in three years, it's going to make us a stronger place. They're going to get laughed out of the market. Right. And, and that's where your really great CEOs come in because they're not saying I'm going to do this and we're going to lose on this. They're saying, I'm going to put my neck on the line. I believe that I can make something happen. I take ownership. I will take the risk. I believe that if I do this, I will get you the results you want. And if we have CEOs that are willing to take that kind of risk, I think they're being heard a little bit more. That is incredible, incredible, <laughs> incredible. I believe a hundred percent. And you know, they, they shirk back and, and fall too, too conservatively sometimes with that. And, um, it, it costs us dearly in terms of people. We, we, especially as leaders and especially the way the market is, as it is right now, we, we are covering our own butts to, to yeah. stay steady and we, we try to drag it along as long as we can. But imagine if we took a little risk, how much more successful we would have a chance to be. Mm -hmm. I love that. Stand up saying, this is what we're doing. I believe it's going to be great. And, and, uh, oh putting themselves on the line. Good stuff. So as you're looking forward, I always like to ask, what is exciting you about people and HR and business right now? I'm really excited about combating this idea that has become trendy, that that I can run a business without a people function. And I think, I, I don't know who's doing it. I've seen some podcasts and some, and some Instagram reels of people saying, I ran my whole business without it and I don't need this. And I really, I really like getting out there and talking to people and letting them know you're right. You don't need an HR department like you think you had one before, but people are your biggest expense people are your biggest investment so you can choose to let them on their own and do nothing that's an option you can choose to have the leaders in your organization handle it some probably with good abilities some with not but by doing that you're taking your great sales leaders your great marketing leaders, your great revenue leaders, everything else out there away from the thing they do best. So if they had the support of someone with knowledge and expertise and experience in managing these tough things and, and taking some of that pain out of the way, where could your business go? So sure, do it without one, but also you're wasting the talent on your team that you spend a whole lot of money to bring on. Yes, because the HR function doesn't go away. It just means that you're, if your leaders are doing it, they're doing things that would normally be done by somebody else. They're, yeah. it's right. Dealing they're with people done. doesn't go away. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't go away. Yeah. Um, and, and I hope, you know, I'm only one person, but I think that there's a lot to be done to, to shift away from the traditional understanding and reputation of who HR is. And while I certainly have met a few folks that, that, that maybe are operating um, in, a, in a more personnel uh, way, um, it's usually company driven um, and not necessarily driven by, by the human in the HR function. Mm -hmm. um, People behave in HR the way the company wants to. That's a CEO's decision, not uh, the HR function's decision. Yeah, because they're largely in some of those situations just enforcing policy or making sure training on policy and making sure it's happening. Yeah. Well, and if you're a CEO and you want your sales leader to do a better job 
and sell more, you talk to them and ask them to sell more. An HR leader is the same thing. So what you want them to do better is what you tell them to do better. So if you tell them to get a handle on costs, they're going to go get a handle on costs and that creates reputation. If you tell them they need to get a handle on performance, they're going to go do that and that creates a reputation. If you tell them you want everybody to be happier, they might just go do that and that creates a reputation. So mm -hmm. it's all just a functionality. We put a lot of pressure on on HR as if um, as if they made it all up, but it's really it's really however the organization works. Yes. Yes. Huh. That's awesome. Because you can you can develop the right reputation if you want to. You certainly can. You certainly can with the right leaders, with the right guidance, with the right expectations. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. Yeah. Good stuff. So we're about about with our time here. Um, if you had to tell the people listening one thing about HR, they might want to consider. I mean, this last one was a great, great one, but I only have so many. I, okay. <laughs> well, if you're out, we can move to the next one. But if you've got one more thing that you would like to tell them, what would it be? I, I would say, don't be scared. Um, I'm, I'm telling, I'm telling leaders out there to go talk to your people. I'm telling people and and everyone to go talk to your HR people because I, I think if you just ask them where they're coming from and tried to understand where things are, you might break down a few barriers where right now you're seeing a lot of frustration. Yes. Love it. Go out and talk to the people. Talk to the people. Ask the hard questions. It's yeah. always good. That's right stinks at the moment once in a while but it's good in the end yeah That's exactly. good in the end. well shannon we've got a very important question here because oh. before we got on we were talking about your sons enjoy baseball that is true so you are you just need to imagine yourself for this question to really come come to you okay so you're you're at a rockies game hmm. you and your whole family you're having a great time and all of a sudden you find yourself in the dugout and the, the manager, the coach, head coach, it's the bottom of the ninth. There's two outs. Mm -hmm. They need, then there's a guy, there's a person on second base. Okay. Tie score. They need to win this game. Okay. Coach looked over, said, Shannon, you're going in. Grab your helmet, grab your bat, knock this run in. I got dinner reservations in an hour and I need to be there. Okay. What is your walk-up song? What is my walk-up song? Um, so, uh, Pitbull, I don't know about you, but I feel good. <laughs> there we go. That That's is it. awesome. <laughs> I knew being a baseball mom, <laughs> baseball fan, you would have it. Always going to have one ready, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good <laughs> stuff. Good stuff. Oh, well, thank Shannon, you so much. Thank you. It's been an awesome having you here today and so much great information shared. For those of you listening, I want you to go back. If you got in late, go back to the beginning, start listening to Shannon from the beginning. And oh, I forgot to ask too, Shannon. What's the best way for someone to get a hold of you? If they want to contact you, talk to you about HR, just got some questions. Yeah. LinkedIn is a beautiful place. Um, and you could reach me on email, Shannon at CarrierHR.com. All right. So we will do that and we will be back again. But first, I wanted to say thank you, Barry, Harry, Chasen, Jamie, who we have, Sharon. Um, I'm, I hope I didn't miss anybody. I didn't. Okay. I'm pretty good for dropping the comments today. Appreciate that. And like I said, if you got in late, go back to the beginning. Shan, I, look, I got like three pages of notes from this conversation. Thank you so uh -oh. much. It's There's lots of good stuff in here. And reach out to Shannon if you haven't talked to her, want to talk to her, want to learn more about how she's helping companies with their HR and enabling 
using their HR to enable business growth and prepare for a sale. Thanks, everyone. Hang out just for a minute, Shannon. We'll finish up offline. Everybody else, have a great rest of your week. We'll be back again. Thank you.